Hey everybody, this is Tina with Two Chicks and a Cricket, and I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, what I do with my paper. And I know I've done a video prior um, about my paper storage and everything, but I just recently, um, last week I went through and um, reorganized some of my paper and um, purged some of it because I love paper and I just keep buying paper and so I have to go through and purge it every now and again if I want to continue to buy paper and it doesn't look like I'm gonna stop buying paper anytime soon and wouldn't you know these paper companies just keep making paper that I have to have. So really I think the problem is with the paper companies, not with me. So this is what I did. You guys know I just use these black crates and I get these at Walmart and you can get them in all different colors and you can get them for between three and five dollars. When you first put your paper in here, I get the hanging folders. You know, you just get a box of them and they look like this and they just hang. And when you first get them, and you're putting your 12 by 12 paper in them, if you get the ones from the these crates, if you get these crates from Staples, your paper will not fit in them this way. So you have to get the ones from Walmart. And it'll be a little bit tight at first, but as you put your paper in, it works. So this is my... Um, this is what I like to call filler paper. So I used to break down all of my paper stacks and I would put them according to whatever they were, like flowers, squares and plaids, polka dots, stripes, that's how I would do it. So this is what, the reason I call this filler paper is because this is the paper that I come to to fill spaces in my layouts. Like if I need another piece of pattern paper and I need some stripes or some polka dots, this is what I do. And it's kind of just like generic, you know, nothing special paper. So like this is my Paisley's. And I just recently, like this came from a paper pack. And I was pretty much at the end of the paper pack. There's only like six or seven pieces left. And so I just went ahead and filed it appropriately in this. And then also I have my season paper. So I have spring, winter, fall, and summer. And then I have, um, at the very back I have holidays. And they're just broke up to the holidays. Um, you know how they go through the year. So the other thing that I did that I updated is I started using these plastic tabs on my tabs so that my tabs hold up. And you'll get those plastic tabs in the box of hanging folders that you'll get to do your paper. So then my next crate is uh, all my paper companies. So these are like, here's my Mind's Eye paper company, you know, uh, paper packs. And I just, I keep them in their cover. And then that way I can just grab out this paper pack if I'm working. And then that's how I keep my paper packs. And I just keep them according to company. And then also my hand-picked paper is here. So anything that I hand-pick goes right up in the front. And then for my solids, I do a couple different things. Here's my 12 by 12 And I just went through, and this is all my generic, uh, generic 12 by 12 cardstock. It's done in color. Uh, starting, you know, with red, and then I just go back, and um, this is just the stuff you pick up, you find, it's nothing special, I use this um, a lot of times, it's, I mean, it's good cardstock, like I got it, you know, some of it is like basil, like this is a basil, I can tell this is a basil, uh, came from a basil cardstock pack, some of it's the AC Moore Company. This is just like, when I say generic, I just mean the kind that you're just going to pick up off the shelf. Um, 
that's in packs. And then I have hand-picked solids, and this is um, like the, you know, 69 cents a sheet, you know, shimmery white, or, you know, specifically, I've gotten it specifically for projects in the store. And then I have specialty cardstock, so sometimes a, a, a pack of paper will come with a, um, will come with solids, like this is a, a my mind's eye, this was the Trace Bella, um, paper stack and it came with these are all the solids it came with so I just keep those separate and then some of these are like my pearlescent papers and uh, my textured uh, metallic glitter like I keep all that there and then I keep my um, chipboard in the very back of that right back here is all my different chipboards from breaking down my albums. And this I just try to keep very, like I went through all of this paper, and sometimes you get in like a paper pack, you'll get like, uh, like the pink, this always happens with the pink. In the middle of the pink section there's like fluorescent pink that I will never use. So like I pulled that out of my pinks and set it aside for my daughters to play with. And then I'm a big eight and a half by 11 person. I love eight and a half by 11 paper. So, um, the front of this is all of my Stampin' Up! eight and a half by 11 paper. And I keep all that separate because I use it very specifically for things. And I'm building up my collection. So I just do it in the folder. Each folder is um, an 8.5 by 11 certain color. This is Blushing Bride. And then the very back of it, I have, all, again, all my generic 8.5 by 11 cardstock. And then over here, in these crates right here. Um, like I have one crate that is 12 by 12 Stampin' Up! Um, cardstock and I keep that all separate um, just so it doesn't get messed up or like I just I don't have enough space over on my wall to have another crate for 12 by 12 paper so I just keep it in this. So anyways I just wanted to do a really quick updated video of what, how I do my paper and what I do with it. And since I just went last week and reorganized it all and purged it, um, I wanted to share. And I think Wendy's getting ready to, um, she's been wanting me to come over and help her purge her paper. But um, I thought I would share how I do it and that I just wanted to say it's okay to purge your paper. I know it's not, for some people it's kind of hard. I know Wendy has a hard time. She always feels like, well, maybe I'll use it or, you know. But sometimes it goes out of date and sometimes you just need to go through it. And if you're really not going to use it, if you haven't used it, if you don't really like it, get rid of it. And so the other thing that I keep in these crates over here, I just, I think you guys probably know if you follow the blog. One of the things I keep in here is um, I separate out like my girls have their own crate of paper that I use specifically for them and then we're getting ready to have a little boy and so I have a crate here that is just little boy paper and so that also helps me keep it organized and I can um, keep up on what I have because when you have so much paper you forget the kind of paper that you have. So anyways, thanks for stopping by the blog and um, I hope that this video helped you guys see um, a different way to store your paper.